What's up, Smart Homers? My name's Aaron. In this video, I want to take you on a little journey and show you how I moved my Plex server from a Windows PC to the Zima Board 832. If you don't know what the Zima Board 832 is, it's a little server or PC that's pretty powerful for its size and is meant for things like running your own home server or home lab, things like that. I think it's a nice little device that's very suitable for setting up a Plex server. Full disclosure as always, this device was sent to me by Ice Whale Tech, which is the company that makes this device, but they didn't tell me anything I should say about it and it's gonna be an honest review as always. Out of the box, you get a nice note from Lauren, the founder of Ice Whale Tech, some nice Zima board stickers, the Zima board box itself, and the power supply. The power supply has a few different adapters for different countries, so I'll attach the US one. Let's pop open the Zima board box and see what's inside. Oh, it's another box. Inside this one, you get the instructions, the Zima board, and another box with a SATA adapter for an external hard drive. Behold the Zima board 832. To me, this thing is beautifully designed. Home assistant hardware designers take notes. It has a really aesthetic looking heat sink on the top and a shiny plastic back. The front end has two SATA 3.0 ports and a SATA power port. The side has a PCIe 2.0 port, and the back end has two gigabit ethernet ports, two USB 3.0 ports, a mini display port, and a 12 volt DC power jack. Under the hood, this device is packing an Intel Celeron N3450 quad core 2.2 gigahertz processor, eight gigabytes of LPDDR4 memory, and 32 gigabytes of eMMC onboard storage. To get this device set up for first time use, we're just gonna connect it to our local network with an ethernet cable. You'll need to supply your own ethernet cable, but if you don't know which one to get, I'll leave a link to the one that I'm using here in the description of the video. After connecting it to the network, just plug in the power and it's gonna boot up. This device comes pre-installed with Casa OS, which is a community-based open source software that's focused around a Docker ecosystem, but it's targeted for personal cloud solutions. One of the things I really like about Casa OS is its app store, which has a huge number of apps, including Plex, Jellyfin, and Nginx. Now that we're booted up, let's head over to a web browser and type in casaos.local in the URL bar. Apparently you need to add the HTTP in front of that address. Otherwise the OS and the login screen looks really weird. And I didn't know that until after I'd already set up my login credentials. So what you're seeing here is not gonna be exactly representative of what you see if you get one of these, but I'll fix it in a moment. Scroll down and click go, and then fill out the new account details. Click create, and it's gonna log you in. Here I realized the problem and quickly added the HTTP into the URL so that it would display properly. Casa OS is a really good looking environment with white text on transparent tiles and a very orderly layout. Tiles can be dragged and dropped to organize it just the way you want. It seems like a really nice home lab OS in my opinion. I won't go through all the features of Casa OS because it has a lot of features and options, but it's a good idea to update the OS if it isn't up to date, so that's what I did. Like I said before, the App Store is really nice and it has a lot of great apps like AdGuard and ChatGPT. It also includes a Home Assistant app if you want to run an instance of Home Assistant on the device. Okay, so since I'm going to be installing Plex on the Zima board, I want to attach a storage device to it that has my Plex media library on it. I copied my entire library of movies and TV shows onto a new hard drive and connected it via USB to the Zima board. My plan is to order a Western Digital Red Drive for the future and I'll load all my media on there and that's what I'm gonna be using, but this is gonna work for now. Once you plug it in, you're gonna see that device shows up in Casa OS. Okay, now let's talk about Plex quickly. If you don't know what Plex is, it's gonna change your life. Plex provides a way for you to manage and stream media across all of your devices. You set up a server and put your media files on it, and then anywhere you go, you can stream that media to your devices. This includes movies, TV shows, music, pictures. It's super cool. Not only that, but you can share your Plex library with other people so they can stream your library to their devices. I actually use Plex all the time, streaming media to my Chromecast with Google TV that's connected to my basement projector. When it's integrated with Home Assistant, Plex is even more powerful because it can do things like dim the lights when a show starts, and then brighten them back up when you pause it. Plex requires a moderate computer to handle the streaming, and this is where the Zima board comes in. 
Now that I have my media attached, I just need to install Plex. Click the App Store and search for Plex. Click it and click Install. Before we open it, we need to go to Plex Settings and add our media locations as volumes. Click the three dot menu on the app and then click Settings. In the Volume section, we'll add a new volume by clicking the Add button, and then in the Host box, we'll type in slash media slash, and then the name of the drive that you connected. Follow this with the name or path to the folder where your movies are stored. I named my drive Plex Library, and the folder is called Movies, so I put in slash media slash Plex Library slash movies, and then I put slash movies in the container box. Then we'll just repeat this for the TV shows folder as I'm showing here. After you're done, just tap save and wait for it to load. When it's done, click the Plex app to launch it. Since I'm migrating my Plex server from one that already exists, I'm gonna go ahead and log in with my Google account, close the Plex pass window, and then name this server Zima board. Click next, and now we'll specify the location of our libraries. Click add library and click movies in the window that pops up. Click Next and then click Browse for Media Folder. On the left hand side we can see the Movies and TV Show folders. So we'll click the Movies folder and then we're going to click Add. Click Add Library and then you're done adding movies to your library. I repeated this same exact process but for the TV Shows folder. When you're done, click Next and then click Done. If you want to bring over all of your watch progress from your old server, you need to first stop your old instance of Plex. After that, navigate to the Plex Media Server folder on the old server. That's typically found at C Users, Username, App Data, Local, if you have a Windows PC you're using it on. When you find it, copy it to a folder on your desktop. Now we want to access our Zima board via File Explorer, so just head to Casa OS, click Files, and navigate to data slash app data slash plex slash config slash library slash application support. You should see a folder called Plex Media Server here, so hover over it and click the three dot menu that appears. Click Share and then copy the file path that is shown. Paste that into File Explorer, hit Enter, and now you should see the contents of your Zima board folder in File Explorer. Now you just need to find the folder that you copied to your desktop from the old server, copy its contents, and paste them into the Zima boards folder. Once this is done, you can restart Plex on your Zima board and you'll see all of the watch history and watch progress from your old server. Anyway, so that's pretty much it for this video. It's a pretty short one. As far as I can tell, this device is well capable of handling a Plex server and it's a nice little compact device to do it on. One thing you definitely want to do is make sure that you're connecting a hard drive via the SATA port and not USB because USB is kind of just a slower or less stable way to do it. The other thing you can do is buy the special Y cable for the Zima board, which allows you to connect two hard drives, but they share that same SATA power port on the end of the Zima board. I'll leave a link to this in the description. Anyway, I hope I've given you a little idea on how this device performs and on how Casa OS looks, but if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the description. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you like this kind of video and hit the bell to be notified when my next one comes out. Anyway, thanks for watching. See ya.